All right, so today we're going to be talking about our 4.3 and our 4.4 vocabulary. We just have one word for 4.3, so that's why we combine our 4.3 and 4.4. Uh, plus 4.3, because that has one word, goes relatively quickly. Um, so make sure you are completing both 4.3 and 4.4. The first word we have is our only 4.3 word, and that's risk-benefit analysis. Uh, so that means every other word outside of this one is going to be a part of your 4.4 vocabulary. So for this one, risk-benefit analysis is the process of evaluating the possible problems of a technology compared to the expected advantages. So one example of risk-benefit analysis would be comparing the risks and benefits of using headphones to listen to music. So when we're looking at this, basically risk benefit is kind of looking at pros and cons. It's like a pro con list is really what it is. We just use the word risk or benefit. So risk being the con, benefit being the pro, right? So you can go through and list a whole bunch of these things, right? A risk of headphones could be maybe it could damage your hearing if you're listening at too loud of volumes. Um, a benefit being is it's private. You don't have to share your noise with everyone else. So sometimes that's good for you and sometimes that's really good for the people around you, especially if you don't like their taste of music. And so now for my graphic over here, instead of putting a picture of a headphone, because I've actually used that image in the past when I something different, I have this scale and we have over here kind of represent those little warning symbols, kind of risks that maybe would happening. And then there's the benefits. In this case, whatever item we're kind of comparing, um, there's you can see a lot of these pluses for those benefits and those outweigh the risks, and that's a lot of times what we're looking at. Do the risks outweigh the benefit? Or do the benefits outweigh the risks? Either way, um, if the benefits outweigh the risks based on what we look at, then a lot of times we will like that product because now there's more benefits, there's um, a greater amount of good things than negative things, uh, and that's typically a good thing for us. Now the next word in our first 4.4 word is engineering. Now we've talked about an engineer, now we're talking about engineering, and they're very similar, right? We're just changing kind of exactly this, what it's looking at. So engineering, or that actual process, is the application of science to satisfy needs or solve problems. So we talked about an engineer is someone who you know uses science and technology to solve problems. Well, engineering is basically the process of doing that thing. And so an example of engineering, I've mentioned this in class actually a couple of times, well, your shirt is an example of engineering. That's I like to use this example because it's one you don't typically think about. Really, anything you see in your day-to-day -day life is a product of engineering. Someone had to engineer it. Um, and so I have this image here basically kind of in detail shows what some moisture wicking fabric is like and you basically the sun is just multiple layers and they'll be do different things and this is kind of something that's hard for you to draw um, but it kind of gets that idea so you can draw you know your own thing or however you want to draw this diagram here that's fine um, but I wanted to get the point across that there's a lot more going on than you think when you have you know that fancy under armor fabric that wicks away moisture or dries really quickly um, there's a lot more work that goes into that and a lot more engineering than you write, uh, than you might think. Here's just that same image. It's just kind of um, increased in size because I knew it was kind of small. So if you wanted to be able to actually read those little captions, uh, you absolutely can. So that's all the reason that I got it. Um, this slide in here for you. Now our next word is going to be bioengineering. So we just talked about what engineering is, right? Now we're just adding this little piece here, bio. And now you might think, okay, well, like biology. Well, biology is the study of life. Um, so bio is going to be, at, in a way, kind of living things. It's about engineering things for living things and kind of improving our lives. So engineering is going to be the branch of engineering that involves applying engineering principles to biology and medicine. So this is often bioengineering is where we're going to find a lot of um, medicine and um, a lot of other things that are helping, you know, prevent illnesses and all those types of things. So one example of bioengineering would be artificial limbs. Now this one, not directly medicine, but is going to be artificial limbs in which you lose an arm. Well, it's nice to be able to gain that back. And um, what's really cool is they've come a long way, especially in recent years, um, these artificial limbs. And that's why you can see a picture here on the right of a pretty advanced uh, artificial limb here, this arm. And now you can look some of these up on videos as well too. They can act very similar to an actual hand. Now they're not quite 
you know, the same as actually having your arm, right? Obviously your real arm is going to be better, but they've come a really, really long way um, in recent years. So they're really an excellent um, example of bioengineering and really how we're developing this and improving and really helping people's lives who have maybe lost an arm and they do the same thing with, you know, a leg or any of those types of things. The next word we're going to be talking about is aerospace engineer. So now aerospace is going to deal with the branch of engineering that consists of the design, construction, and testing of airplanes and spacecraft. And you can kind of get this from the actual name, aero, kind of sounds like air in space, right? So you think, you know, you're in the air or space, you're flying. And that's really a lot of what they're looking at is flight. And so one example of aerospace engineering is the development of planes, right? And so that's why I got this image over here. We got a blueprint, a 3D model of um a jet plane here um, would be an example of something an aerospace engineer could be working on. And of course, there's a lot of other things an aerospace engineer is going to work on than just strictly a plane, right? Uh, but really, anything that's going to have um, really fly through there, you're going to need an aerospace engineer. And now, on to our next word we have mechanical engineering. So, now mechanical engineering uh, is one that I think a lot of people are more aware of um, because it deals with mechanics and they, you know, they think of a mechanic, right? And so really uh, mechanical engineering is the branch of engineering that deals with the design, construction, and operation of machinery. So an example of mechanical engineering are cars. So I have a real fancy McLaren P1 here for the car. Just an example of, you know, real extremes of how mechanical engineers can really push the limits. Um, if you don't know, these are extremely fast cars and every year they come up with a new car that kind of pushes the boundaries even further of the mechanics, kind of pushing the machinery as far as it can go, um, which is kind of really cool and something that mechanical engineers do. Um, of course, you know, just a mechanic would be considered a mechanical engineer as well. Another one of engineers and another one of the more commonly thought of when you think of engineers is going to be a civil engineer. So a lot of times when I say, oh, what do you think of when I say an engineer? You think of someone building like a building or a bridge and those types of things. That's exactly what a civil engineer does. So a civil engineer is the branch of engineering that includes the design and construction of roads, bridges, and buildings. One example of civil engineering would be building bridges right? That's exactly what I had in her definition as well, and that's truly an example of it. Um, that's why I got a picture of a bridge being built here. Uh, you can, and bridges can be extremely complicated to build, especially if they're a big area, and so that's why they have all these, uh, you know, suspension ropes going on, and they, a lot of times then they'll have a boat underneath where they kind of hoist up um, different parts while they're building it. Um, but civil engineers, like I said, are responsible for buildings and roads and just a lot of um, what we refer to as infrastructure um, that we use, you know, with traveling and things like that. So civil engineers are really, really important with how we kind of live our day-to-day -day lives. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is going to be chemical engineering. And now this one is going to be the branch of engineering that deals with the conversion of chemicals into useful products. Now, as you know, some chemicals are really helpful to us and some are certainly extremely harmful to us. And chemical, engineer, chemical engineers are going to look at, okay, how can we use these chemicals to help us? How can we either modify them or adjust them or combine them in ways that help us rather than hurt us? And so one example of chemical engineering would be shampoo. Now in this picture, I actually specifically put baby shampoo in the sense that baby shampoo is especially formulated for babies. It's not that they're just putting baby shampoo on there and say, oh, well, now I can use it for my you know, child, uh, it's there because it's um, more sensitive to their skin, meaning really meaning it's not going to irritate it. They have really sensitive skin. And so we want to make sure our shampoo isn't too aggressive because some shampoo we can really dry your skin out and all those things. We want to make sure that that's not happening. And so they have this one specially formulated. They've, um, you know, converted it. They've kind of adjusted those chemicals in a specific way that it'll work best. And of course, you know, they have different shampoos and some of them have conditioners in them, right? They're two-in-one and all that in which they formulate it specific for uh, specific use. Of course, chemical engineers can do more than just shampoo, right? And that's just one area that sometimes a lot of people don't think about. But, you know, there's perfume and there's, as far as if we're still looking at kind of those beauty products. Uh, but then there's still, sometimes they'll look at chemical engineering for medicine as well. So that's where chemical engineering can overlap a little bit um, with bioengineering, um, if it's more of a chemical background. 
Now our final word that we're going to have is going to be electrical engineering. So electrical engineering is the branch of engineering that involves the design of electrical systems, including power, control systems, and telecommunications. Telecommunications is just a real fancy word for basically like phones and ways to communicate. And so you see like the tele here, like you think telephone, I mean obviously communicate would be talking. One example of electrical engineering would be a cell phone, or if you think about it just as a smartphone, right? They have that similar type of purpose. Um, and then I have a picture here of a cell phone over here. Uh, you can imagine they're actually extremely impressive. So this phone here, I mean, think about it. It's relatively thin. Actually, it's very thin, considering there's a lot of electronics packed into that. You think of all the things that your a smartphone could do, whether you have one or not. Um, I mean, they have a GPS in there. You can, you know, figure out your location. You can use it for maps if you're trying to, you know, get to a place. You can use it to video chat with someone across the world. You can use it as a calculator. You can use this, all these different things. There's a lot of compact electronics in there. And that's quite an impressive feat for electrical engineers or, or that engineering piece. Um, of course, so anything that really runs on electricity, you needed an electrical engineer. All right, so that's just about wrapping up our 4.3 and 4.4 vocabulary. One thing you may have noticed while we were going through this is that there's sometimes a little bit of overlap between the different branches of engineering, and that's true. Sometimes you're not just one type of engineering. You need to have, you know, understandings of the other ones as well. You maybe just have a general focus. You may also know that a lot of times with a lot of uh, products, a lot of things we create, we're going to need multiple different or multiple engineer branches or types or specialists um, for that project. I mean, you can imagine, say we're just building a, a building. Well, okay, we need to have a civil engineer for the kind of design of that building, but buildings will have electricity in them for lights and all these things. So we're going to need an electrical engineer. Um, and so we can have all these different uh, combinations of things that we're going to need. And so a lot of these engineers are going to be working together um, to kind of create the best overall product. So just because you're, you know, a bioengineer doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to know things about the other categories or be able to work in those fields either. So thanks for watching the video. Make sure you have all of the information filled out in your vocabulary book. Uh, if you have questions about what we just discussed in this video, please do let me know in class.